Hi, Yellow Chair. It's Helen. Today, I want to introduce a Instagram live video I did with Sam and Aussie. Today, we talk about communication being a we rather than an I in a relationship. We discuss what it was like for Aussie and Sam to navigate a reality TV show as a couple and what it was like to heal after the taping and to rewatch themselves. So this is an exclusive interview where Sam and Aussie talk about what it's like to operate in a relationship through spiritual and mental health healing. And so I hope this serves you today and can't wait for you to listen. Let's start the show. Hi, Aussie. Hi, Sam. Hi. How are you? I'm really uh, good. How are really you? good. I'm so excited to talk to you today because I went back and listened to our podcast episodes and I'm just like so excited. But before we start, I kind of want to do some, let pe- a couple people in, wave hello to everybody and kind of do some fun questions. So... <laughs> Last week, Aussie told me, Sam, that Aussie likes their eggs uh, sunny side up. How do you like your eggs, Sam? Um, the opposite. <laughs> no way. Uh, I actually like them a lot firmer. Like an over medium would be good for me. <laughs> you like it fully cooked. You like it overcooked. And uh, overcooked, but to me, just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so... While we're, while we're starting, I kind of want to go over just like how your mental health is doing, just like where the mind is at, where the space is at today, what we're thinking about, where the conversation is going to go. Do you want to start? Yeah. Uh, I, I know when we last spoke, you know, um, I, I was kind of going through some things and, um, wise, but I am doing so much better this week and I'm yeah, we've had lots of more breakthroughs and just um, mm. connected, um, not just with Sam, but with, you know, life and everything. So, you know, it's always an ebb and flow of uh, how life takes you. Mm. Thank you yeah. for being real about that. Go ahead, Sam. Um, I'm pretty much the same <laughs> in the sense of I've had really, really, like, excellent moments and just, like, totally in the flow. And then I've had my moments of, what am I doing? <laughs> Where am I going? What is this for? And so yeah, we've, we've definitely, like, we have so much healing moments that happen. That's what we like to call them <laughs> now. <laughs> In the most challenging times, we're like, at least we get something out of it. So it's mm. not, <laughs> not just a challenge. <laughs> Speaking of that, though, as a couple that's so spiritually attuned, one of the things that you just said was we go through our ebb and flows. And there are days where we don't feel the best, but there are days where we feel really great. And so can you speak to how you continue to be receptive to those ebbs and flows moments? Because even in my life, I find that it's hard to accept the difficulty and the rumble. And I'd love to hear your wisdom around that. Um, sometimes when I am feeling a bit cloudy, I just pull cards and I let the cards tell <laughs> You let the cards tell you? How do you, how do you get your mind ready to be open to that? That's a really good question. Because you can easily pull out a card and you can go, okay, but there's no heart behind it. So that is such a good question <laughs> that, um, I think it really varies okay. for people. Um, for some, it may be harder to, say, pull a card when uh, a lot of emotions are happening or things are very just, like, unsure or yeah. <laughs> be difficult. And so instead of tarot cards, which takes some level of tuning in, uh, listening to the messages. I choose oracle cards, which I can read them out of the book. And so there's a lot less of me getting in the way of like, oh, I don't want to hear that right now. (laughs) (laughs) I just want to feel bad in this moment. Just let me moment of bad, right? But that, (laughs) there can be more challenges when it comes to interpretations. So Mm. choosing 
cards and it has a very direct message i'm like okay i can hear that or i can consciously know i'm not receiving it <laughs> in the moment so yeah yeah for Asi, what about you spiritual wellness yeah for me me, what's been helping a lot is somatic um, experiencing. Mm. I've been um, tapping. Uh, that, that's been a pretty good um, mm. kind of releasing that energy that, you know, that forms when you're feeling a certain way or certain things haven't gone your way. Um, and so releasing that kind of built-up energy, um, challenging energies. Um, you know, when we don't want to feel – because being spiritual you can also um i know i've done it with my experience where i want to stay positive and i want to feel good all the time you know i want to like manifest and be in alignment yeah. all the time but obviously that is not life <laughs> it brings mm -hmm. changes so i've had to actually come around the other way accept the 3d challenges and be okay in feeling bad you know, accepting that, you know what, well, I'm, I'm not feeling that great today and I don't have to um, move past it really quickly because that's also bypassing in which I look wow. back experiences in my life where I've gone through a breakup or something like that and I've actually bypassed without really knowing that I was bypassing, thinking that it was something that I was uh, you know, more, more evolved, more uh, learning, you know, come to another level of uh, acceptance and things like that, but I really was bypassing and how do I know that is because it shows up again mm. <laughs> in, in things in, in ways that I, I was least expecting. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's for me, it's like accepting the days when I do feel bad and be okay in the feeling of that and asking that emotion, what are you here to teach me? Mm. And feeling that discomfort comfort has been something that I don't like doing. I don't like sitting in the negativity or anger or the, you know, I want to move past it quick, but act for a yeah. second. <laughs> and one final thing too, that is like one of the easiest ways for me, and you don't even have to be spiritual for this, is like singing, listening to music and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. singing, singing and listening to music. Yeah. One of the one of the things that we were just talking about for those of y'all who are just tuning in is Sam and Aussie were talking about their spiritual practice and how they continue to just ground themselves. And I can you speak to what it's like to come out as a couple after coming on the show, <laughs> you know, being being on such a in such a public level and now you're you're so vulnerable and open about your spiritual spiritual journey. Uh, Janessa said thank you, Aussie and Sam, for being open and vulnerable. Speak to that. Like, is it difficult? Is it what's that process like day in and day out? I mean, we both chuckled for a reason. Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, the challenges <laughs> and not normal challenges. No. Um, it's it's been a very big. Um, learning lesson for us but i think even though sometimes our challenges feel 10 times bigger than they might have been without going on the show at the same time i think we've talked about it where we believe some of the things would have been so much harder to ever talk about had that not happened mm -hmm. so there was a level of like intimacy and closeness that it actually brought together with us mm -hmm. even though it felt like you know, trying to go over mountains. Sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, how do I say this? Was it you? You talked about it brought you closer together, being in such a public platform. Yeah. Tell me how it grew, or maybe even like in some ways stunted your relationship. Can you speak to that for me? I can speak to that yeah. because um, I wasn't expecting the backlash that I received after episodes mm. uh, five through eight. Oh got dropped a second second batch got dropped and it was just a really big surprise to me and uh that was you know firsthand experiencing um you know social media <laughs> you know uh on mm. activity that you're you think you're prepared for but you're really not and so i even um i was telling sam at the time and she was an amazing support and i'm so grateful that i had sam and other close uh friends during that time because that really does a number to somebody. And I understand now 
why some people, even celebrities, other celebrities that are going through challenges from the public, uh, how it can take them over the edge. Um, so I was like, wow, now I understand firsthand how that feels, how it could take somebody over, you know, really do a number on their mental health. Um, so that was really challenging. But at the same time, with every challenge, it's uh, what can I what can I learn in this moment? And it was, you know, not caring what other people say and, and feel about you, regardless of what kind of uh, narrative that you were given, because that's out of your control. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my challenge was, OK, now I have to do the deeper work, like strangers coming you know saying all these things about me that they don't even know <laughs> you know 95 percent of me and coming up with these opinions strong opinions how do i manage that so that was my challenge now to go inward um thank goodness i had outside support but that was um yeah that's how you got to face it um and slowly slowly you come out of that and slowly slowly you start appreciating all those um negative comments because now you go you know what if i can handle this i can handle anything right mm. so and, and and you know you tie it back to your your uh, upbringing and having to be perfect and having to you know be seen a certain way so letting go of those things was uh part of the the growth there as well mm. it's really, really interesting because filming happened in the end of 2021 right and so we're mm. quite far past that and so mm. the interesting thing is that as people are watching it it's almost like that those those moments get stuck in time and so it's as if it just went like everything in between filming and today like didn't happen yeah. <laughs> in many ways as people are still kind of watching it or maybe catching up even though it came out a little while ago and mm -hmm. um perceptions and i mean just i think because of a lot of what was happening it also kind of didn't necessarily make aussie want to you know go on social media that much really? to see and have to filter through all of the yeah. stuff mm -hmm. and one of the things that happened actually recently and I was like oh maybe I'll say this example is I was like <laughs> commenting back to somebody who was um making some comments and I was like trying to describe like what the feeling is like and it's almost like if somebody is like wedged under a rock and they're just like stuck there and they're struggling and people are walking around because it's just like maybe at a park or somewhere in public and they see this person under this rock stock and instead of trying to help them they're just like throwing stuff at them or telling them you're so weak and like leaving them there and that's essentially like the feeling of what that was to like go through that and even witness my partner going through that mm -hmm. and even when i was like when we were watching the show and uh, it came to episode seven and eight and Aussie was encouraging me to watch it. So I was like, I just can't watch these episodes. Like they're so heavy and all the energy. I just like the, the scene just started yeah. where I think it was like where we were talking on the bed after mm -hmm. um, the, the restaurant scene had happened. And I just started crying, like just mm -hmm. seeing that bed scene. I just started crying mm -hmm. because I could just like feel that moment, even though it was like a year later, a year and a half later. Wow. And so even then I still couldn't watch it. So I still haven't rewatched those episodes because I was just like the pain and the not understanding at the time and not being able to like validate, like mm -hmm. that was still hard to even just like watch that after. And so I think like, yeah, that was kind of, um, maybe the description of how that kind of felt like and still yeah 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 Aussie yeah. Sam you just spoke about how vulnerable it was to watch yourself after two years of not being on the show filming in 2021 thank you so much for your vulnerability by the way because I think that when you're on a show that is so public and comes out two years after you have filmed it, you're in a relationship, things have changed, and to watch raw versions of yourself on a reality TV show and to have to relive those moments is incredibly vulnerable. 
And so can you speak to how you're healing in this time, having to watch yeah. who you were two years ago and the spiritual journey that that's taken for you? Uh, for, for me, it was really tough watching. Um, you know, initially, I, I, the initial thing for me was I wasn't going to watch any any of the episodes, but because of those mm. aim, I was like, what's going on? <laughs> so I have to see what's, what's being shown. Mm. Um, it was to my surprise eyes you know and it's it's almost like you're watching the thing and you're being gaslit again like because you're like that really yeah did that and you yeah. realize because narrative it's a show it's right. to keep interested to figure out if we're going to stay together or not otherwise mm -hmm. you have a boring show mm -hmm. so um with all of that taken into account um it is a mm -hmm. <laughs> re-traumatizing myself mm -hmm. because even after filming, um, I, it took a lot from my mental health, uh, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. It took about a year and a half to recover from after filming. Um, and so the show was something that was very challenging. Um, I can't take it back, but I'm glad I went through it so that I learned, you know, the things that I need to work on, you know, speaking my truth. Um, it's okay to, um, you know, defend yourself and your, you know, your honor and your, uh, your credibility. Um, I didn't do any of that because, you know, race being an Asian family, speaking bad of somebody in front of the cameras was not my, uh, that's not what I do. Um, so, you know, learning what reality TV really is, like through the experience, um, uh, taught me a lot. But at the same time, I got to learn some of the things that I needed to work on in terms of um, it's okay to speak up. It's okay to uh, stand in your truth. And it's okay to, you know, talk about, you know, with especially with Sam, some of the, um, you know, trust issues that I had coming from living with, you know, my previous partner, I don't even want to say her name, mm -hmm. um, going to Sam, mm -hmm. that um, was really hard to then speak up about our issues because it was on top of the stuff that we had been, you know, challenged with before the show. So mm -hmm. I took a lot away from what I was intending to do with the show, which is really conscious partnership, learning how to communicate, um, you know, the, all of those things that you would have in a normal relationship, mm. but other things on top now. So, yeah. Mm. So, I don't know if I answered that question. But you did. One of the, one of the things that you talked about is the, the psychological piece of having to be filmed, navigating a relationship and having to heal from the trauma on your own. And Aussie, you spoke about healing from your anxious attachment style in our previous podcast episode. But I guess my, my question is, like going into this as a couple in this live, I'm really curious about how you have learned to see and witness to each other in the midst of all of this anger and turmoil and grief. Because I even watching the two of you hurt and process in this Instagram live, I noticed how awesome you put your arm around Sam when Sam was talking about the moment and Sam, I noticed how intently you're listening to Aussie. And so is that practice of listening and pacing something that has always been there? Tell me about the evolution of that relationship since the show. She's holding my hand while I'm speaking. <gasps> I know y'all are like each other's support animals. I remember you telling me that when we first met. <laughs> so cute. Uh, I'm. Oh, I mean, I guess with healing, I mean, we all know it's not that kind of linear thing that we would like it to be, and yeah. so I think even kind of describing it, it would almost be like there's just so many different layers mm -hmm. to it at different points in the relationship. I mean, even just this weekend, we had this moment of recognizing some of our past hurts from other relationships, workplaces, people, just mm -hmm. relationships in general that we've had, relationships <laughs> that we've had that we kind of had this realization of we've kind of felt backstabs a lot in other relationships or situations wow. or being in these situations where we kind of like mm. 
recognize that we had this underlying like lack of trust in the other but not like us directly but this underlying lack of trust for getting burned because of these situations and we had this thing come up that felt like a big challenge but on the end of it we were able to kind of work through it and eventually get to the that, so that root of it mm. like i trust you but like i don't trust you <laughs> it was like it's like it's not yeah. you, but it was like all of those other yeah. situations happened to me and it was like this light bulb moment just happened wow. oh it's because i wasn't trusting you <laughs> yeah wow. and yeah. sam was rattling off all the situations that had happened to her and mm and receive that and then that light bulb moment for me was like oh i've had these this this and i, I listed them including the show and yeah. i was do you think that was part of why you know you were the way you were in when i moved in back back in with you in the show and you said yeah likely yeah, yeah. you know and we so we connected mm -hmm. that and we were like yeah we actually had because i felt it but i didn't know what was you know um what so. what aussie is referring to is that when we moved back in together one of the biggest things that was kind of that wedge between us mm -hmm. was that there was like this feeling that i wasn't supporting in the way that aussie was needing in those moments to validate what had been happening mm -hmm. in violent marriages mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. that was a roadblock or like a challenge or really just a wedge i think is the best way to explain mm -hmm. that is like there was just this wedge and we weren't quite sure what the root of it was mm. and so that's what like yeah so in wow. those moments it was did you do you think that you didn't believe what was happening in the trial marriage because of that trust issue and so that's from, what from the past yeah, yeah from, past from my past experience mm. and so i was having difficulties even in those moments of like knowing whether or not i could have trust in the situations and so yeah yeah, yeah. lightning <laughs> yeah like even though it's been um another six months you know uh, like two two good years past since um we filmed it it's like still you're still like learning bits and, bits and pieces from you know just daily things that might have come up and um so that's the thing with that about couplehood is you your challenges or um, you know the things that come up the, the, if you you know kind of follow it down to the root it it can enlighten other things along the way and so that's part of the healing journey for in um, both of us individually as and as a couple that we've mm. been discovering so. and i think too when we were talking about that kind of anxious attachment um that it like even in the difficulties and the challenges that we had after filming with like the trust that we weren't even fully understanding what that was at the time and even just like the the traumatic experiences that occurred and then making the connections of the things that were revealed during the reunion and things like that like that even in turn even though it was really really challenging i felt like it also helped heal the anxiousness mm -hmm. in me and the anxious uh, like really i had mentioned this briefly they showed it in the reunion yeah. of like, learning how to provide more space mm -hmm. and i there were all these things that i was able to connect dots to from my own experience of like mm -hmm. what that is to need to fix things now and we're always taught that the faster you do things the better and when somebody yeah fix things right away they're the right ones right and like mm. that's necessarily tr true and that's so, so true it's like there's that term of never go to bed angry mm -hmm. but i think that what one thing that you said that was really wise is there is this need for space because these are two individuals with their own unique relational experience coming into it with a different attachment style with a different experience and so i love what you said of just the discovery of the reunion of what it was like to just be in a space where we're still learning about each other even after we're still picking apart the pieces after oh yeah, yeah. Oh. and we did a lot of work and that is the only reason why we were also able to support tiff in those yeah. moments the reunion yeah. 
we were able to recognize certain things and realize like things were not adding up and you know mm -hmm. like gauging the body language mm -hmm. and that it was like like we wouldn't have had the tools to be able to be supportive and understand in those moments that Tiff was just needing to know that they weren't going crazy, mm -hmm. right? And so mm -hmm. those were things that we were able to learn from each other. And then, yeah, we ended up being able to help somebody else. Yeah, I, I mm -hmm. learned through the show what gaslighting is and what a narcissist is. So <laughs> a lot of research on that. So, yeah. um, But not... not <sighs> labeling anybody um mm -hmm. in terms of my own like uh, i guess development mm -hmm. and, and knowing these mm -hmm. these right. traits maybe yeah or, traits yeah you're right more, mm -hmm. more traits um mm -hmm. able to um you know now i i hope uh i hope i would know if earlier mm -hmm. in advance but kind of somebody that um you know exhibits those traits and be able to go okay i draw my boundary I know what I got to do sooner rather than later so yeah we have a couple of comments from the audience Mina says love how you supported Tiff Jeanette Janessa said OMG the support for Tiff Harmon says Sam I'm so glad you were there to support Tiff and so Tiff also released a YouTube video talking about how they were a victim of narcissistic abuse and you know sometimes it's important to put a label on what you've been through and I'd love to talk about that, of what it's like to be in support of your fellow cast members, you know, how you continue to support them and, and what you've learned and being in support with them. Yeah, I'm, I mean, for me, even during filming, mm -hmm. um, I was probably one of the only people that was on the show that was on, uh, was, a, was a friend or was a support to Vanessa. Mm -hmm. um, during the during the filming yeah. um well yeah and and, and for you <laughs> sam was like me too aussie <laughs> <laughs> don't forget about me <laughs> we, we did hang out with yeah. Vanessa afterwards and all of that um yeah it was because um the, the the way that things were uh i just saw that she was a human <laughs> you know mm. and she's doing her best and i didn't i don't judge people just from first first off like everyone is human so mm -hmm. that was my that was my gauge and um i know she was going through a lot she was working through a lot realizing a lot learned a lot yeah and i would say she was probably the person on the show that had the most growth um and the most real person because she wasn't trying to be fake or you know say the things because she wanted to look a certain way um i can't say for the cast members mm -hmm. but yeah, she was real. And that to me is so important, you know. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I was supporting her through the, all the challenges she was going through during mm. the show and after. And even, um, yeah, with, you know, the aftercare of filming, um, I thousand percent, I'm a big Vanessa fan. Um, mm. and fan, because Tiff is real as well, yeah. you know. And then what yeah. Tiff had gone through and, uh, I'm, I'm grateful it, the chips fell the way they did during the reunion because mm -hmm. I was I was worried Tiff was going to be, <laughs> you know, together with somebody that mm -hmm. did not deserve Tiff. Um, mm -hmm. so I was actually grateful the way that the way that it ended, the way that it, the chips fell and Tiff is now free and able mm -hmm. to drive in their life. Live in life. <laughs> yeah, live in life. Mm -hmm. I go Tiff, you know, like I, I, I'm so grateful that it, it turned out that it did <laughs> yeah yeah um i just i was only chuckling <laughs> i'm not naming any names <laughs> i just had a couple of those moments where it's like you know you you think you know people and then mm -hmm. they're just kind of rude <laughs> i don't know <laughs> it's such a polite way of saying that <laughs> like i didn't have to this rudeness <laughs> yeah yeah um um, that's the only reason why I'm chuckling is just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we definitely are team Vanessa and team, team Tiff. Tiff. Yeah. <laughs> They're great. Yeah. They're great. Um, and I, we, I love the vulnerability behind the, the cast point. members too. Yeah. Like Tiff and Vanessa have been very like, oh, vocal and vulnerable I, about their process. Packed in with 
yeah. each other um just to make sure how see how everyone was doing and um and it was actually surprising too even after the reunion when certain things were brought to light mm -hmm. i mean but you don't see anyone saying oh sorry i judged you so hard or <laughs> you know like i'm no. sorry i said those things to you i see now it was still just kind of yeah it's just wild so there was a, yeah. there's been a lot of reflecting but yeah. it's given us opportunities to learn a lot yeah. of lesson learned on mm -hmm. personalities and what you know especially for me i don't know i just mm. those kind of, those types of people right. so it's eye-opening for me and it's a good lesson learned and so yeah it's awesome um be Go do them, but um, I, I just appreciate the people who are real, mm -hmm. the people who are, people who are human and uh, are kind. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. There's there's one question from Carmen that talked about your journey, Asi, about finding your path to processing and communicating. And for people that are just joining, Asi was just talking about how painful it was to watch the public reception of Aussie getting turned after watching those episodes and so I'd love to you you kind of talked about this in our podcast episode last week but I'd love for you to talk about it now Aussie for people that are interested in what your processing and communication journey has looked like in the last two years since the release of those episodes yeah yeah um processing has been uh you know it's a daily thing right mm. um to say it doesn't even start just because of the show um i've been in my you know trauma since i was 19 leaving the house um coming out and not being accepted and you know having it flare up into a physical altercation and um just kind of uh kind of like hating the world kind of hating god mm -hmm. um going mm -hmm. and then you know, you know and you know as you said so rightfully in our, our podcast was mm -hmm. turning that inward because mm -hmm. that anything that was allowed, you know, being the, the way I was raised, I can only be perfect. I can only be a love, you know, wow. loving any, you know, problems. Just turning mm -hmm. it in, and so I can relate to that. Yeah, a, a decade of just, uh, you know, um, perfectionism, just, having to do the right thing, overworking, yeah. um, you know, like partying too much, like mm -hmm. all the twenties, and and then. Uh, you know, having that light bulb moment go off, especially when I moved to the States actually, and having that um, spiritually transformative experience come through, mm -hmm. then I was, what is that? What, you know, I've got to, I got to know what God is to me now. Because mm -hmm. um, I had, I had hated God for the last 20, mm -hmm. uh, 10 years. Yeah. And so um, that journey brought me to um, looking at myself, looking at my uh, path and my journey why I was acting the way I was, why I, you know, had those uh, issues in relationships, what was showing up, learning I was codependent, learning I was entropy attached. And then just, I mean, learning those things helped improve my life, improve my relationships. So I was just on this path of uh, self-discovery, basically, spiritually, as well as, you know, psychologically. Mm. Um, I just love psychology and how people work. So that was like a thing that I, I consume consistently. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I think it is a daily practice of always reflection when something comes up and it doesn't feel good, doesn't feel like, you know, you're angry or you're hurt or you're in pain. You always go, what is, is it, you know, is this mine? Like, or is it somebody else's? Cause you know, being codependent, you kind of mesh everything together as well. Um, so learning tools and, and, and practices and skills to uh, reflect on whether this is a symptom of my childhood upbringing, trauma experiences, or is this something that I'm going to have to, you know, really reflect and go, right, why do I do this? Where can I, where can I go back and find the root of it so that I can work on it mm. so that I can improve my life, I can improve my relationships. Mm. Because at the end of the day, this work that you're doing isn't just for you, it's improving your relationships and in turn your community, your world. So it's it's for the benefit of everybody. So, yeah. 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 And I think um, something I've been trying to also say just amongst all of the, like, mm -hmm. oh, Aussie work on your communication. Oh, Aussie, like all of these things that I'm trying to be like, it's too, it's like multiple people. It's not wow. just, it's like, <laughs> 
it to just us. Thank you for saying that. Uh, it's so good. Understand and each other's communication styles and each other's mm. needs and not expecting to always be, you know, understood in every moment or maybe not everybody is like fully regulated. Maybe they're tired, <laughs> hungry or had some stuff happening and so in those moments it's like it's not just that's an Aussie it's been a us thing wow <laughs> as we both understand ourselves more as we wow. both work on our communication then that yeah. is what is really going to mm. be you know the 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 biggest factor in I don't know just like communicating yeah I, I like using those communication frameworks um mm. and them is the nonviolent communication framework where you you know you're feeling your feelings and then when you're communicating this you go okay these are my feelings what are those feelings telling me my need I'm not my, one of my needs are not getting met or maybe multiple needs are not getting met yeah. realize and then when we come to to talk about it is to you know not have a judging you know this is what you're doing to me what but observing what I'm feeling and so it's all internal it's all keeping it to me and and expressing the need the feelings and then her reflecting back to me you know is that correct is that am I getting that right um, and then you know reflecting that back if until we get to the same level to the same you know, mm. we're saying and and understanding what we're receiving and hearing, then we're able to switch, switch the roles, receiver versus the, the giver or the, the communicator, and then do the same thing. What are you feeling in this moment? What are your needs not being met? And then come to a, you know, letting go of the needing to be right, letting go of the, the egoic, like, I have to prove myself. No, I'm going to stand in this and identify this is what I'm trying to say and you're not getting it. Like letting go of all of that. And that's the spiritual side, I think, that comes into play because yeah. it's, it's going above your psychological, you know, wounding and all of those things and needing to be right and coming to a conclusion where you're like, okay, I can understand you. I don't have to agree with you. I can understand what you're saying and empathize and be able to, um, reflect that back and then give you what you need and truly give you what you need not just say i'm sorry or not just say oh okay whatever you know i'll just get this over with really truly feeling that and so in that moment you're also putting down all of your your defenses your you know past experiences and really truly being with that person present with that person's needs and wants and desire and be able to exchange that in an equal equal way yeah. uh, i I think one of the other things too that I've been trying to practice as much as possible is communicating what my needs are also like upfront. So <laughs> yeah. I'm like excited about something, for example, and like, and I want to share it with Aussie, then it's like, you know, I'll communicate. I'm not looking for any opinions. <laughs> I'm not looking for feedback right now. Can you just like, you know, Celebrate join this me. parade with me? <laughs> That's so good. And trying to be better too yeah. about communicating. A lot of times we're not taught how to communicate our needs in anything. And so we get used to expecting other people to just know what we are seeking in that mm. moment. And, you know, we get upset when it doesn't match. And so it's like, wait, but what if I just communicated? <laughs> what if I did? Just told you it's like the three h's do you want to be helped do you want to be heard or do you want to be hugged yes you know and, and for me prior to sam relationship with sam it it came to a breakup where i learned that i couldn't i couldn't even define my needs in a relationship really yeah how and old were you when you realized that that was oh my gosh recent so like maybe 38 39 wow you're 42 now right awesome yeah. So for those, oh, those sorry. who don't know, there's a 12 year age gap between Aussie and Sam. So we're going to explore that soon. 44. 44. I'm 42. sorry. Jesus. <laughs> you were 42 when you filmed. You were 42 when you filmed. Yeah. 42 when I filmed. That's yeah, right. yeah. So it's two years after. So I'm 44. <laughs> I can do math. It's the second anniversary of my 42nd birthday. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, you kind of forget after your 40 something. <laughs> yeah, so that was that was like six years ago that you realized that you couldn't communicate your needs. Yes, that was a wow. 
relationship problem wow. with that's a journey i give you what you need mm -hmm. i was ready to i was ready to go into to the next level of that relationship and they were kind of like i don't know um and they said i can't give you what you need and we had this break for two two weeks where i was two months sorry um mm -hmm. where I, I wait a minute I, you make me happy everything's great like of course you, you gave me you gave me everything i need but it took me two months to come up with two needs of mine in a relationship really I, this was in your previous relationship at 38 yeah wow <laughs> That's when I realized, holy crap, I don't know what my needs are. Like, I don't, I don't know because I never thought about myself. Was this your, was this your partner asking you, Aussie, what do you need? Or was no. this in therapy? This was, this was me saying, I want to move in with you. Uh, you know, my five year timeline. So if, yeah. you, if you want to, and then I was if you like, want, oh. such an anxious attachment, if you want to, what you need. And to me, everything was yeah. going fast mm -hmm. and I would be like, you know, go to the next level of that relationship so when we had that break and for me to think for two months mm. i only cook two needs of mine that's when i realized holy crap i don't know i don't because i'm always what does the other person need i need i need to provide i need to be perfect i need to like give 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 so that they don't leave me you know what I mean? like mm. taken care of and that was my codependency that was my upbringing that was all of the things that i was doing to you know make sure everyone kind of you know, you're still controlling, you know, your environment because you don't want people to leave you. You don't want to be abandoned. So you're trying to please everybody. And that was when I realized, oh, my gosh, I don't I don't know my needs are. I mm. need to come up with two. And now I have a list. <laughs> you know, like now I know wow. I've worked <laughs> knowing that I'm, I am valuable, that I, I, I provide uh, value in relationships and I bring things to the table. I don't have to just give, I can also receive. So. Yeah, I don't have to give, I can also receive. That's so powerful. And I think sometimes I kind of like to turn things into almost like a game, like keeping things more lighthearted. So sometimes it'll be like, there's one piece of food left on, <laughs> on the plate. What do you so I, I have kind of just played around with it sometimes too, just to like in a lighthearted way, bring it up. Cause like, it'll be something that Aussie really, really likes. And like, I don't like so much. And so I'll kind of use that and play around with it. I'm like, oh, do you want the last piece? And Aussie will try, almost try to force it on me. And I'm like, I said, I don't really like, I don't want it. And I know you love it. <laughs> So, like, turning those into these things yeah. of, like, let's actually sit with this for a second. Like, That's you good. want so bad, and I, I don't care about eating this thing. Why are you still trying to give it to me? <laughs> I'm like, the last thing. I, there's, I, I do have to speak to the dynamic I'm noticing because, Sam, you're obviously so lighthearted in this conversation. And, Aussie, you're so, like, macro, very deep. <laughs> And so when you talk about this like five year timeline, when you talk about like the evolution of meeting Sam, you were both at a place where you were both spiritually curious, you met at a healing space in your life, your journey towards understanding your sexuality as well is very different. Like Sam, you came to understanding that you didn't want to be with a cis man when you were in your third, late or mid 20s, mid 20s. Yeah, I think I remember you saying. Yeah, yeah. and then. And Asi, you were you were in your teens when you ran away from home because you it was almost like a knowing you've always had. And so when it comes to just the age gap, the different like journey towards understanding yourselves, there is a difference, obviously, even in, in the way that you answer questions. And so does that add to just the lightheartedness and the acceptance in the relationship because you know you're so different? Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I just find her so interesting. And, uh, you know, tell me why. Tell me why. <laughs> tell me what you find interesting in Sam. Because she can just uh, surprise you. And I'm very, yeah. it's so surprised me. You know, I've, I've mm -hmm. got relationships and I'm a, you know, I'm a Gemini. And yeah. so I get bored quite easily, but Sam just keeps me on my toes. <laughs> just, just the way uh, she sees life. Um, mm. if, you know, a challenge, mm. she'll mm. just do something or say something that is so out of the box or out of like succinct with what's happening. And, you know, as you said, I'm a really deep person. Yes. I'm very, I can like 
go into a whole thing and she'll just like say something that's so funny and really like I'll be laughing on the floor and we'll just be you know so it is very complimentary I think our relationship um where you bring so much even though you're 11 years younger you bring so mm -hmm. much perspective that mm. I have and, and that mm. really my life you know <laughs> so wow Sam, what about you? What do you see in Aussie? I think too, like I am very lighthearted. I love to have fun and like joke around and everything. But at the same time, like I love that depth and mm. I love to be able to explore things that are like beneath all of these layers. And so for me, it's like a really good match in those moments too. And sometimes I just need to like, you know, stir up the energy because like Aussie could get real serious real fast. <laughs> yeah. Aussie's like podcast quality <laughs> depth. Yeah, and so it's like I I don't even I don't know. It's just it's fun. It's I also am on my toes and yeah. um, <laughs> I kind of joke sometimes, like, be careful when you say you like weirdos, because then you'll get weirdos. <laughs> but I've always been different myself. I've always, like, enjoyed things that are very eccentric or out of the box or just not um not the i don't know like the trends and mm. so, yeah, like we have this just fun little dynamic of being just very odd, <laughs> odd weirdos, people. <laughs> weirdos together and having yeah. fun yeah um, just the just the fact that you're so open and willing to accept the differences of one another i think it it just speaks to i don't know there's light whenever I see the two of you like every time we've interacted every time we've talked with one another you know we talk about someone asks in the comments like Aussie how is your processing and communicating and then Sam you were so quick to say but it communication is a we it's not just an I and then the fact that there can be a joke and there's laughter and it can go really serious really quickly I'd, I'd love to just transition into like you're one of the only you are the only couple left on the ultimatum everyone else has since left or it's separated and gone their own ways and i think that a reality show really speaks to having your feet to the fire of a relationship humor obviously is a key pillar in your relationship is there anything else that keeps it fun light-hearted you know toes or even just like like getting through the fire <laughs> all of the above <laughs> getting can you speak to that for me getting through the fire yeah um i think that there was a lot of sureness in our purpose for saying yes to be on the show i think mm -hmm. that was that was really important for us it's like we both just had this inner knowing of the sense of purpose like we were meant to be on it and we didn't fully know why and i think when we kind of bring in that spiritual aspect we were able to get to a place of surrendering to the process fully so before even going into it we were very um strong in our understanding that we were going into it for us as individuals first and that would only be um, like if we were meant to stay together, then it, we would stay together in the end of it. And then the relationship was second. So wow. it was like personal journeys and our own healing and our own, you know, growth, whatever that was going to look like. We surrendered to that before wow. we went on it. Right. So and open the possibility of Sam falling in love with somebody else or me falling in love with somebody else. So that was something as well to even kind of wrap your head around and be like, are we willing to really give it our all mm -hmm. and not hold the other person back, right? Because if they have found love in another one, then that is that is what we're here for, right? Mm -hmm. to, to figure that out. So it's, it's really committing to that process and trusting that process. And I think that just in general with the word ultimatum, there's almost like this inherent hierarchy with it, oh. where it's almost 
you're the one giving the ultimatum, then all of a sudden you're like out of place and the other person has to meet you where you're at or else it's, you know, it can't work because you didn't do your part to get to where I'm at. And so I think like that was really, really important too, to not treat one or the other as less than. It was just Mm -hmm. in finding that balance to come together. Mm -hmm. And so I was like doing whatever work I could do too on my end to be like, no, I'm not going to treat this like I'm ready and you're not therefore I'm like in this higher position Mm -hmm. and like catch up or not it was it was very much about like no what can I also learn from this what will you know help in our own individual healing again so that we can come together and it'll be a more solid relationship so it was like never seeing the other as like less than um yeah that just didn't vibe with me (laughs) How do, you, how do you do that in a reality show where you get leading questions, where you are taught to assume things about the other person? And then even like even in the in the watching process, there is a villainizing that can happen. And so how do you consciously just like love people from a pure place when when that's the reality of the show? For me, um... Um, it was my spiritual practice that got me through that and stay grounded in it yeah. and knowing my happening. Um, cause I, I could, cause I was being gaslit. So the mm. only I could trust in was, well, I know I wouldn't treat somebody the certain, the way that they're saying I'm treating them. I know for a fact that I'm not like that. I know for a fact that, you know, even if Sam doesn't validate me, I, I, I had to just go inward and that's, like it really had to go inward and do that work um, of, you know, fighting that uh, self-critic in, in your mind, like mm. person, you must have done, you know, you didn't, you didn't do your best in the communicating. You didn't, you know, you didn't allow that person in or whatever self-critic narrative was going on in your own head. So I had to go in, I had to trust and I had to believe that, only love is going to get me out of this only love in terms of whatever is presented to me in that moment i can only show up in love and so Mm. the changeover that's what i was doing despite what was coming across at at the table Mm. Um, sending love staying present um i didn't drink i was just like i was going to be a hard hard episode hard uh thing to get through i have to be present Mm. and and be really conscious and it was hard. It was really challenging to hear the, the you know, awful things. But, I mean, now, now, looking back, it has made me stronger. Mm-hmm. It's made me compassionate. It's made me realize um, there's more than certain types of people in the world. And, and, and to stay present and to stay grounded and to keep doing the work on yourself because, what it what shows up you know when what the stuff bubbles up is like i'm not i'm not lovable sam doesn't wow. love support me um wow. i have to sit with those those things and work internally to go that's not sam's stuff that's my stuff that's you know? real. Mm-hmm. And, and transform that and self-love that um so that's on the other side of getting to that yeah so good it I think it really does come down a lot to learning about yourself and who you are in order to really be able to distinguish between what is yours and what is n- what is not yours. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, still kind of approaching it from a, like, we're both pretty big believers in the whole idea of law of attraction, mm-hmm. our internal is reflected to us in our external. And mm-hmm. so even in those moments, where it's like not knowing that it's mine mm-hmm. if i still take that idea that i'm there's still something inside of me that is causing this to reflect to me in my external i can see things from a different lens it's almost That's good taking a step back and being able to not be in it fully and so that yeah. was one of the ways that i was really able to work through the whole dog situation <laughs> it really was like <laughs> i had to just get to I had a light bulb moment and from then on that's where I was like okay I understand I see things clearly now and I have that clarity but I needed to get to that space of 
wait a second, why is this person causing me to question whether or not I like animals? <laughs> like, that doesn't make sense. And so I think it's a pink that layer. And once I understood that I was like, that doesn't, like, if this person is making me question <laughs> my own reality or telling me who I am or telling me how I feel about something, then there's something that's not right in me that is kind of like mm. succumbing to the situation. And so mm. in that moment, that's when I was able to really hold space and be mm. like, really know that this must be due to something, something else that I don't know about and I can never understand, but I know my truth so strongly strongly that nothing can you know disrupt that um that sense of who i am and whether or not i like dogs so yeah that's so and her college friend sent her a picture <laughs> oh, no oh. i didn't ask for it no you didn't but i'm just saying your friend did send a picture uh, <laughs> during the episodes when they dropped and she goes do you want to send this a tip wearing my roommate's dog in college <laughs> in a pink dress <laughs> i love that <laughs> I I know we only have like four minutes left and so Mina is actually moderating this. She created this like list of fun questions okay. that I would love to ask the two of you. It's like a list of like warm-up questions that I would love to just end today's section with. But how did you feel about today's live? It was fun. Yeah. Today was fun. fun fun talking to you Helen yeah. it's always fun <laughs> and then the femme princess said you two are such a delight so happy for you both as individuals and as okay are you ready for rapid fire questions yes okay. is it turn taking turns or is taking it... taking turns well actually I want both of you to answer because I think it would only be fair to know but <laughs> question number one favorite ramen I'm actually more of an udon eater. <laughs> okay, okay. So, Aussie, shocker, headlines. Yeah, so I like the authentic kind. Uh, <laughs> but sometimes, um, because I'm just very, um, sometimes I don't want to do what like everyone's doing. So I will literally go to a ramen place and not eat ramen. But <laughs> I can relate to that. I can relate to that. Aussie, what about you? Favorite ramen? Um, it would have to be tonkatsu. <laughs> okay, okay. From that little place in um little tokyo on like second street i forget the name and that's blasphemy as well i just haven't lived there in a long time um <laughs> what i'm talking about where it's like a tiny place and you have to line up outside I, but yeah. i know what you're talking about it's in little tokyo i think it's outside eating only right yes you have to like line up outside you have to line up outside yeah it's in this right place udon place which i'm just going to take you to <laughs> <laughs> oh Let's not say anything about that. <laughs> private, private date for the both of them. Um, would Aussie ever do another reality TV show? Hell no! Unless I have the editing privileges. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> okay, question three. Aussie and Sam, would you watch another season of The Ultimatum? I haven't really been interested i think once i saw like the queer stories and the queer version i'm like i don't know i'm not as interested in these <laughs> i'm sorry all right okay Su susan said this was so much fun thank you for being vulnerable today people love you too okay Aussie, did you answer are you gonna watch another season i am not watching any reality shows ever again <laughs> good to know for me <laughs> okay Question number four, has anyone slid into your DMs since the show? You know, a lot of people from Brazil. Brazil. <laughs> got lots of Brazilian fans. <laughs> people love you, Sam. Aussie? Yes, but I'm, I'm with Sam. <laughs> yes. You kind of like, do you get them and you just immediately delete? You don't even look, look up who they are. I'm not on social media yeah. as much, okay. but I also don't maybe just like don't respond <laughs> it's just that's true that's healthy because you don't want to open a door that's not yeah. gonna get open yeah what do you say like thank you but no thank you i don't know like you can't yeah. say anything because it especially especially if the person is attracted to you i think yeah. even responding and saying that's really sweet but yeah. can create an open door that you don't want to create exactly that's fair. 
Yeah, it's, that's fair. Okay, let's move on to question number five. Sam, if Aussie gave you <laughs> uncooked eggs in the morning, what would you do with them? Uncooked eggs? Half cooked eggs, oh. like Aussie likes them. <laughs> Over, over easy eggs. That never happened, but <laughs> well, I would probably give them to us. I would have, I would have thought that you both would have had like a fight, a breakfast fight. <laughs> oh no, no, not. I, I might eat it if I'm depending on what it's combined with. It might be good. Well, if it's know. if it's at a restaurant, it came. I think you might just be polite and eat it. Like I don't even think you'd be like. I have you? nothing against half cooked eggs. I just prefer them more cooked. More cooked, like burnt on the bottom. No, not that much. Okay. okay. Just, I'm just making sure. You're, you're solid and, yeah. Brown gotcha. on the I like crispy things. Crispy. Yeah. Crispy things. Good to know. Okay. So are you are you both, like, good on time because it's 5.01? You're good? You are, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. What is your Myers-Briggs? I know, I know Aussie is an ENFP because it's on Aussie's bio, but Sam, I don't know your uh, Myers-Briggs. When I've taken it, I kind of teeter between INFP, INFJ. So oh. I'm not sure. Um, I resonate more with INFP, but I know I have J tendencies in me too. I can see the, <laughs> the P because both of you are looking to understand. Maybe it's the spiritual journey that has created the P. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe. For the longest um, when I first met Sam, she was like, I'm an INFP and I'm, I'm ENFP. Um, P. So I think, and then you retook the test after like a year and a half or something, and then you got a J. So, yes. Yeah, yeah, I got J, then P, then J, and then I took a sp I took one that said you're like in between both because I'm so, I guess it's so close to, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It, it's complicated with those tests because I think that it, it really does depend on your mood, whether or not you're feeling more judgmental that day or less judgmental, but we'll see. This is actually my favorite question of all of the questions, but what is the most impactful book that you've ever read? For me, it's um, A New Earth. I think yeah. I mentioned. You mentioned that on our podcast, yes. So that would be my most impactful. I don't think I have one. Myself. I, I'm the most important I, book of my life. I don't think I have one. Yeah, um, yeah no, yeah. I don't. Um, <laughs> That's, that's honest that's honest my quirks that i don't really follow that i watch a lot of youtube videos i read a lot of blogs um and i go to a lot of trainings and workshops but like i don't read books so much anymore maybe ask your um it's like i forget it's sonia chuckett um the it's like something about learning to connect with the angels or like the different types of angels and how to call oh, them cool. and how i was able able to um through a meditation um learn the name of like my spiritual team so uh, yeah that was really cool so that's really cool awesome. okay. <laughs> okay okay all right next question what is your favorite show to watch oh i love watching current shows currently <laughs> or of all time of all time favorite show of all time the one that you come back to when you're feeling sad or just want to binge watch television it's so so hard. before i met sam i was never really like a show person mm -hmm. so the mm -hmm. only show i like watched from like start to end and was obsessed with was buffy so <laughs> really <laughs> with sarah michelle geller yes a vampire slayer <gasps> yes oh my gosh <laughs> I never would have guessed that because you're so deep, Aussie. <laughs> I would have guessed. I would have guessed something like. Though, if you yeah. watch it, I'll, I will send you some. Like Josh, yeah. Josh is an, an amazing creator. Um, okay. It's a very deep show if you know how. Really? Yes. I've only watched scenes. Yeah, maybe send me send me things that you was, would argue is actually. Deep. Oh, okay. A lot of shows when we rewatch them or movies are actually really really deeply spiritual mm. like the subcontext if you watch it through that lens and so mm. obviously like depending on who's watching it and what they're needing from it mm. is different but we watch a lot of things through spiritual lens now and I so like so many things really talk a lot about like the universe and divine timing and all of the things it's actually Ooh. 
Yeah. yeah. And so one of the shows that we really loved that didn't get a, enough love, I think because it was so complex, um, was Sense8. Sense8. So that was really? a really, really good show about consciousness and the connection between like soul families. Like, and then cool. the Wachowski sisters, you know, being the creators for, you know, they're mm -hmm. amazing, amazing creators. And so really respect their work. And yeah, you're right. Actually, Sensei has to be up there for me too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I, have to, I have to watch that show. Okay. How would you describe Aussie? And Sam, how would you just, wait, Sam, how would you describe Aussie? Aussie, how would, be how would you describe Sam's fashion style? in one word oh how yeah. how would how you would de I... describe each other's fashion style um it depends on the day <laughs> <laughs> for me i learned this word from sam i would say god <laughs> god it's rude but it's not totally wrong again it's... it depends on the day <laughs> yeah. Godi. yeah oh god Godi. sometimes yeah. we have really hilarious conversations mm because of the lack of understanding of what words mean in an it's not like, we can we can have an entire podcast episode of just like the cross-cultural oh, yeah. marriage yeah. oh yeah it's quite hilarious you, you would think that united states and australia are not as far off but from what i'm i actually am already thinking that like that's surprising to me yeah that that's even yeah. those english-speaking countries we're very very far apart <laughs> sometimes i tell aussie like speak english i don't know what i'm saying speak u.s <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mean that here i love that yeah just like god <laughs> like most people would take offense to that but i understand what you mean <laughs> so aussie would say sam has a gaudy fashion sense of humor sam what would you say about aussie? um on some days it would be very eccentric <laughs> really because yeah. I would think, Aussie, you have a very, like, minimalist. Oh, no. Like, this style's really nice and, yeah. like, clean cut. and real. But sometimes there are some things where I'm like, um, can you maybe not wear that outside the house? <laughs> she doesn't like my basketball stuff. She doesn't no, like it's a specific one that is bright orange and, bright neon, orange. and neon green. So, oh, not Oh, yeah, that's not good. But it's a... <laughs> It's a Jordan shirt. I love oh, it. Oh, is it? Yes. But it's a. It's a. It's neon green. It's neon green and with orange black. and but orange. It's, <laughs> but it's like designed to be like a you know like a you know a racer a racer car kind of. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's agree to disagree. <laughs> Me and Sam are on the same page, unfortunately, <laughs> and I don't want to entertain triangulation. <laughs> So last question, because I want to be respectful of time and thank you for everyone. So Mina said, I support the orange and green. <laughs> I love it. Okay, last question and then I'll let y'all go. Yeah. What was your dream job when you were younger? Mine was a professional basketballer. Make, makes sense. <laughs> Despite my fashion sense, yeah. I wanted to be a basketball player. <laughs> I think I wanted to be a lot of things when I was younger and one of them is like I was one of those kids who was super obsessed with like 17 magazine and all like the girly magazines and all yes that. so mm -hmm. I wanted to be in the magazine <laughs> I love it mine was Teen Vogue growing up I loved having a Teen Vogue subscription yeah. and just reading on how to style hair because my hair was always really curly but oh. I I always enjoy our time together Sam and Aussie and before you go I just want to acknowledge like it's rare to meet a couple that is so spiritually attuned that just constantly wants to grow together that laughs together as much as the two of you do and I've enjoyed spending the last month with the with the two of you because we've met every single week for this podcast leading up to this Instagram live and so mm. thank you so much thank you. it's been such a pleasure um you yeah. brighten up our lives for sure yeah. um to say you have been <clears throat> such an inspiration as well with the work that you do in the world oh, thank you. all that you are i can feel your energy and it's just been lovely so thank you so much for thank you thank you and thanks Sam. watching with us yes. <laughs> thank you everyone <laughs> thank you everyone thank you all 11 of you that have stayed in yeah. for the last hour and a half i asked 
ask you one one question, Helen. What yes. uh, um my Briggs um type are you? I'm an ENFP. Oh, okay. I'm the same as you. Yeah, I'm actually I was surprised, Aussie, because we're the same personality type. Like I'm a two with a three, but mainly two. And then I'm an ENFP. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh fun. Oh. I know. It, I like uh, when you were talking on our podcast, your um, life experience was very like similar to mine. I was it's very just... similar. Yeah, I, I, and your story too is so is so like I was surprised at how similar our stories were. And so even in our live, I was like, maybe I should marry someone like Sam. Yeah, who is like bright hearted <laughs> and younger than me. And maybe I should wait until my forties <laughs> to get married. Maybe I should go on a similar journey as Aussie. <laughs> Remember. <laughs> oh, snowflakes! <laughs> you have I love the reminder. Helen, you're a snowflake, and so you need to chill for a sec. <laughs> <laughs> We're all you. Is what I'm trying to say. Yes, I, I agree. I agree. Well, I don't want to take up more of your time because we've been we've been talking for a while. But thank you so much, and thank you everyone for watching. Oh.